Welcome back to WebCAF AI. We do daily ChatGPT and AI videos for your personal and business life. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the app of Google Ads integration and seeing how to leverage that with AI automation. If you're new to the channel, welcome. This is the series where we're tackling all 5,000 apps found on Zapier's backend and seeing how AI can be integrated with every single one. If you're a returning viewer, make sure to like the video. It really helps us here at Web Cafe. We're trying to hit 100 likes on this video that tells us to keep producing content like this and you enjoy this type of content. But from here, let's go ahead and create our Zap today. We're going to be doing a Zap that essentially when a new lead is taken in through a Google ad, we're able to set up a personalized email to be sent right after. Now to give you more context, when I say a new lead, the way that Google ads structures their lead forms essentially is a form extension on maybe a search ad or a YouTube ad. And essentially think of it like a, you know, a Google form or a type form. This is Google ads way of receiving uh, different types of data. As you see here, you can get name, city, phone number, zip code. From here though, once you have set up a lead form within your Google ad, you're able to get all the data that is you know, requested. Then we can go ahead and take that into our Zapier and start manipulating that with AI. All right, let's go ahead and start. We're gonna go ahead and rename this to Google ads integration. There we go. And then from here, let's go ahead and set up our trigger. We're gonna do a trigger of Google ads and choose an event of new lead form entry. Hit continue. Once you have chose your Google ads account, we went ahead and made some mock lead forms. Use whatever lead form that you want to particularly put this AI automation towards. So in our context, we're going to go ahead and use automation manager. We're going to go ahead and test this trigger. And then this should just be inputting sample data. All right. As you see here, we got sample data such as the region, the company name, full name, and so on. Whatever were the input values you had originally made on your lead form, it would show up here. But what's great about Google ads and its integration is that we're able to play with the sample data. So if you were to launch a new Google ad with a fresh lead form, you can still build out a flow like this and you don't need pre-existing data such as a lead that occurred in the past. So then once we have that, we can go ahead and set up our chat GBT block here. We do chat GBT. We're gonna do an event. We're gonna do conversation. We're gonna continue, continue again. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and set up all the necessary information in order to achieve what we're trying to do today. So to start off, we can go ahead and keep a lot of these variables the same. I'm gonna go ahead and up my model to GBT4 as we are dealing with a more comprehensive uh, context here due to the fact that we're doing a very personalized email to the individual. And then from here, we can add a memory key. Think of a memory key as consistent outputs for the underlying block here. So we're gonna do a memory key of add lead. This can be a random string of 32 characters. So choose whatever, you know, this could be anything. This could be uh, unicorns and rainbows. <laughs> so whatever you wanna do there. And then from here, we can go ahead and set up our prompt. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say context. We have received a lead from one of, from our Google ad campaign for, and then go ahead and give context on what this Google ad campaign was for. So was this a product, uh, you know, were you selling dog houses? Was this a service? Were you doing web development? So in this context, let's just say we were doing a Google ad campaign for uh, AI automation agency. And then we're going to go ahead and say potential client slash customer. And we're going to go ahead and add a little bit more context here. We're going to say potential client data. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and input all the data that we received from that form. Obviously, when you build out a lead form that has more variables, there's more for us to work with. But don't worry, we're going to be able to build out the structure here. And then whatever you choose to do on your back end, you can go ahead and add that additional information. So from here, we're going to go ahead and add the name, semicolon, parenthesis, parenthesis. We're going to then do the company name, semicolon, uh, company name, semicolon, parenthesis, parenthesis. And then we're going to go ahead and see if there's anything else, not necessarily anything else. Now in context, what I should do here essentially would be input the data that we received from our first block. So I'd be putting a full name here and then I would be putting in company name here. But due to the fact that we're dealing with sample data here, I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, input some fixed variables here. But, you know, for reference, obviously you'd input the variables from the original block. But for our reference, we're just going to put in some sample one. We're going to say uh, Tim uh, Willow. 
and then we're gonna do a company name of grass hopper uh, lawns and then let's go ahead and add some more variables so let's say that you had the name the company name and then maybe you add one additional or two additional boxes we're gonna say company size semicolon parentheses location semicolon parentheses and then let's do um, interested service so maybe you had a multiple choice radial uh, on the form itself um, so we're going to do interested service and colon parentheses. As I said before, all these in reality, when you're actually building this out, would be the underlying variables you'd find here. But for the purposes of this, so you can kind of see how the structuring would come out, we're going to go ahead and just, you know, input them ourselves. So we're going to say company size one to 10. And then we're going to say vocation is uh, Santa Monica. And then interested services, we can say social media management. From here, though. Now that essentially we have gave the context for the GBT to understand, okay, we're receiving a lead from a Google ad campaign that we're running for an AI automation agency. The leads data is as what's been outlined here. You can go ahead then to ask essentially what we're trying to achieve here. So whatever that may be in your context, go ahead and proceed. In this context, we're gonna go ahead and just try to build out a specialized email for this lead. And we're gonna set that up as a draft and then essentially not send it yet. But in theory, at scale, you could have sent, have all these emails sent automatically um, depending on your use case. So we're gonna go ahead and say, generate the body of an email encouraging the potential client to schedule a call using and then we're going to go ahead and just say parameters max of four sentences. And we may need to do some, you know, multiple tests here to get the perfect prompt here. So we're going to say parameters max of four sentences. This could be parameters such as make sure to include uh, keywords uh, such as, um, you know, operational efficiency. You know, this is where you'd be able to put stuff where obviously ChatGPT is gonna be able to take a lot of it on its back end. but if there are specific keywords that are, you know, very important or pertinent to when you deal with clients in your industry, you'd wanna put them here. And then from here, we can go ahead and see um, additional stuff here. So we can go ahead and say, uh, if you wanna add more context, you'd add it here. So this is where you'd be essentially adding uh, context on plans. You offer pricing, timeline, so on and so forth, so that when it makes the email, it understands contextually, okay, you're an AI automation agency, um, and then contextually, what are your typical plans? What are your typical offerings and timelines when it comes to this kind of stuff? For now though, we're just gonna leave it open-ended. We're gonna let GBT, uh, you know, do stuff from its back end. From here though, let's go ahead and see what this would look like and see if we need to kind of edit a little bit more. We're gonna go ahead and do test action and let's check it out. All right, so as you see from our output here, it went ahead and outputted the subject of the email and gave us the body. We're thrilled to hear you're interested in adopting our AI driven social media management. Uh, services at AI Automation Agency are unique. So it seems like it interpreted AI Automation Agency as the name of the company. So we're gonna go ahead and readjust that. Our unique platform enables operational efficiency, enhancing online performance and promoting growth for businesses like Grasshopper Launch located in Santa Monica. We understand your needs perfectly. Notice how it took into account the operational efficiency, which we said was a very important keyword to include in the body of the email. Let's go ahead and jump back up here and add some more context. We're gonna say uh, for an AI automation agency called uh, Web Cafe AI. Now in theory, what I could do here is with this output, I could set up a formatter block specifically using the function of split to split the subject line and the body of the email. Therefore, we can separate the two data points and then input it into an email. But for today's purpose, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna generate just the body of the email then we're gonna create another chat GPT block to create the subject of the email. And from there, we're gonna connect the two, you know, and make a nice little gift here. If you feel like you've learned something so far, make sure to like the video. And it shows us here at Web Cafe, you want more content like this. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and see parameters, max of four sentences, make sure to include the keywords of operational efficiency, generate just the body. And a little tip here, we do no text before or after.
All right, from here, let's go ahead and add a new memory key here. We like just adding a you know numerical value. This is gonna clear the memory so it doesn't use this as pre like the previous response as contextual input of like, hey, maybe he liked it that way. I don't like it that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and retest that action and see what it comes out to be. All right, so as you see there, we have gotten a lot better of a response here. We got, hello, Tim. I'm thrilled to hear about your interest in the social media management services at Web Cafe AI. Took into account our name here. Integrating our AI powered solutions can significantly increase operational efficiency got our keyword there and essentially was able to generate just the body no text before no text after we have officially created the body of this email and we can go ahead and proceed to the next block here and one little tip that you can take into account of is we can go ahead and just duplicate this so once we have duplicated this let's go ahead and adjust the underlying text here we're going to go ahead and say context we have received a lead uh do 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 perfect there is only a little bit of information we got to put in here so what we can do is this we don't even need to honestly we can start fresh here so we're going to go ahead and start fresh here and make sure our memory key is fresh here and we're going to say based off the body of this email semicolon parentheses i'm going to assume that it has enough context from the body of the email so i don't have to necessarily put a context block here explaining that you know we're an AI automation agency named webcap the ai there is enough context within that block for it to uh come to that conclusion we're going to say generate a engaging subject line for an email. We're gonna do parameters, uh, no text before or after, and let's see what it comes out to be. There may be a little bit more prompt structure we have to do here, but for now, let's go ahead and continue and test this action. All right, perfect. So as you see here, it went ahead and gave us the email. And if you're familiar with this channel or you've been with us for a while, you already know what's next. You saw not a filter block. Um, we don't want to filter nothing. Uh, if you've been with this channel for a while, what is next is going to be deleting this. And we're going to be adding a formatter block here. Due to the fact that the initial output here, if you didn't catch that, has quotation marks. No problem. All we need to do here is use a text formatter block here. We're going to do a transform. We're going to use replace. And essentially all we need to do is do the output from that initial block there. And we're gonna go ahead and find the quotation marks and we're gonna go ahead and replace it with empty space. We're gonna test that action. And then essentially that will just grab the quotation marks and provide us with the underlying subject line. As we saw before, we could add parameter block here, essentially saying we want keywords in the subject line. Maybe we want the individual's name at the beginning of the subject line. However you wanna proceed with that. From here though, we can go ahead and do Gmail. We can go ahead and do create a draft. In theory, I could send this automatically. I could say send email. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and create a draft so we can kind of see it in our back end. We're gonna go ahead and create a draft into our courses account here. And we're gonna hit continue. And then from here, what we're gonna do is essentially input the data that we just received. So let's start off with the subject. We're gonna use the formatted version of the subject. So there is no quotation marks. Then we're gonna go ahead and put the two email. So in theory, this is where you'd put the email found within the Google ads data that we received. So we'd put email here. Perfect. And then from here, we can go ahead and set up our body, which was created here. And we can add even more fixed text here. So maybe we add the body uh, best regards, you know, Corbin Brown. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that if you want to deal with better structuring and the way the email goes out, I would encourage you to have it so that the email is generated or the body of the email is generated in HTML. That would allow us to essentially, you know, change the body type to HTML, make it so that when you see this final email, the formatting is a little bit more better. But for the purposes of today's video, this should be sufficient. What we're going to do now is essentially, instead of sending it to a test email, let's go ahead and send it to our courses email. So we're just gonna head and put in a fixed variable there. In theory, that would be the Google ads variable as we saw earlier. We're gonna go ahead and hit continue here and then we're going to test this action. Perfect. So as you see here, we went ahead and created the draft using the underlying values we got from that Google ads lead form. What we can do here is we can go ahead and click into this. And as you see here, we got the email that was provided in the lead form. We got the very specific subject line. And we got the body that we created together using the underlying variables found in that lead form. On top of this, we have the fixed data that we identified before. You could also add a nice little signature to this email and so on. There's a ton of stuff such as also adding a PDF. So if we jump back over and we're like, hey, 
with all of our clients, we typically give a lead PDF that is completely free that kind of explains a lot more context of what we're doing here. You can add that as an attachment for that underlying email. Now, before you head off, make sure to check out our marketplace here, WebCafe AI. We build out pre-built AI automations that you can start using for your own store or your client's store, which is always fundamental when you're offering different services to potential clients as an AI automation agency. So that completes today's tutorial. You can find the zap we built here today in the description down below. So you can add that to your project for completely free. We do a ton of stuff when it comes to AI automation. So check out the playlist at the end of this video as we're diving into all 5,000 apps when it comes to Zapier and seeing how AI can integrate with every single one. Without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Web Cafe, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.